welcome to Choose Life. My name is Pastor James Coleman, and we thank you for joining us again for another day with Morning with the Holy Spirit, a yearly devotion that we've been going through um, from Jennifer LeClaire. It's been a great opportunity. It's been a great um, project. It's been great. We've gotten great feedback from people. We thank you for joining us today. We ask that you would like, share, subscribe, tell your friends, tell your family, tell everybody that you know. Hey Amen. They can go back and look at the older videos. And we believe that it'll be a benefit to you and to everyone else. And it's been a pleasure for us to do it. The, as the year is winding down, um, I'm sure we'll have something for next year as well. We hope that you'll continue to join us. So we're going to go through the devotion today. Um, and then we'll have some scriptures and then we'll pray at the end. And hopefully it'll be a benefit to you, not only today, but for the rest of your life. The topic today or for this devotion is determined to do God's will determined to do God's will. So let's pray. Father, we bless you and we glorify you and we magnify you today. We honor you and we adore you, O King. We thank you for who you are and who you are in our lives, O God. We declare, O Father, that we will be in an alignment with you, O Father, that we will be in agreement with you, O Father, and what you desire for us to do, we will surely do, O Father. So we thank you for your patience. We thank you for your long suffering. O God, we thank you for your endurance with us, O Father, as we continue to be molded and shaped and we continue to develop and mature, O Father. So we bless you today. We bless you tomorrow. We bless you every day, O Father, for everything that you do, O God. We honor you and we adore you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. So as I stated, today's uh, topic is, or or actually uh, devotion is, determined to do God's will. And it reads, you can do anything you set your mind to, but you will be better off if you do what I've set my mind to do for you to do. I'm sorry. Don't follow your own wisdom. It will take you only so far. Man's wisdom apart from me is often flawed. Depend on my wisdom and you will walk in peaceful paths. Set your heart to follow my heart. I know the mind of the Father. He loves you and has a good plan for you. So be determined, but determined to do the Father's will rather than your own. And you will always be pleased with the outcome. Amen. So it begins by saying you can do anything you set your mind to. Amen. We remember that the people at the Tower of Babel, they were determined to reach God and determined to reach heaven. And God had to intervene so that it wouldn't get accomplished because surely it would, have, it would have gotten accomplished because they had their mind and they were all on one accord. So the things that we set our mind to, we can surely do and we have to know that. And if we put it um, in the right place, if we put our mind and our thoughts and our actions and our perspectives in the right place, then surely we will accomplish what we look to do. The, the question becomes, is it the right mind? Is it the right mindset? Is it the right perspective? Is it the right will? Is it um, according to God or is it according to our own desires? So surely if we do what God would have us to do, it will be accomplished. And what we set our mind to, we align it with God's will, it surely will be accomplished. Amen? You'd be better off if you do what I've set my mind to do for you. So while we can do what we want to do and we, if we set our mind to it, we can accomplish some, some things but the question becomes, is that thing that I accomplished, is that what God would have me to accomplish? Is it beneficial to my growth as a citizen of the kingdom of God? Is it beneficial to the church? Is it beneficial to God? Is it beneficial to the kingdom? Is it beneficial to my ministry, my brothers, my sisters, my pastors, my leaders? Is it beneficial to them, the thing that I'm looking to accomplish? While we can spend much of our time and our focus to accomplish certain things, we have to understand that it it needs to be important to the kingdom at the end result. Now, there's some things that we set our minds to do because we just like to do them or we want to do them and God doesn't have an issue with that. But we can't allow ourselves to get in the mindset that whatever we look to do, I'm set my mind to it and I'm going to do it and I don't care um, how it affects the kingdom, how it affects God, how it affects what God has called me to do or anything else. But we have to um, understand the mind of God, the mind of Christ, what the Holy Spirit is telling us about God's mind. And then we have to take that into our own mind and then look to accomplish that thing and not be focused on just ourselves and what we desire. It says, don't follow your own wisdom. 
It will only take you so far. Man's wisdom, apart from me, is often flawed. And we understand that God has all wisdom. All wisdom, all knowledge, all understanding is from God. And he gives some of that to men. Amen. It, the word declares that if we lack wisdom, we can ask. So he gives it to men. Um, but we only know a portion of it. We don't have all wisdom. We don't have all knowledge. We don't have all understanding. We have a portion. So we have to function in that portion, and we have to ensure that we have the proper portion for what we're looking to do, for what we're looking to set our will to, and what we're, what we're looking to set our mind to. We have to have the right information. Every decision that we make, we have to have the right information to make that decision. Now we see on the internet, they're collecting data from everything, every website you go to, everything you search, everything, everything, everything. You even thinking about a pair of shoes and all of a sudden you, you go on, on the internet and there's just ad after ad for shoes. So we know something's going on here. <laughs> so everybody's looking to collect data and everybody then is looking to take that data and make a proper decision. The same thing applies to us. When we look to make proper decisions, we have to have the correct data. We have to have the mind of Christ. We have to have the intellect and the wisdom of God and the knowledge of God before we make those decisions, before we look to put our mind to something that's going to get accomplished. We can look to put our mind to something and don't have the, all the information, and it just um, goes disastrously. We cannot have the information when we look to purchase something and not understand that you purchase this thing, but it doesn't include this because you don't have all the knowledge. So now you buy the thing and you don't have the other thing, so it doesn't work properly. So now what do you do? Do you send it all back? Do you go to get the other piece? Then you're frustrated and, and all these things. And, you know, nobody wants to read the instructions and nobody wants to call tech support or anybody else. But we have to know all the information that's pertinent to the decisions that we're looking to make. And God has all that information. He's aware of every single thing that has ever happened and everything that will happen. Right. God never says, you know what? I just had a thought because he's already had all the thoughts. It's just us. We say, you know, I just had a thought because that's God downloading some information, downloading some knowledge, downloading some wisdom unto us. And that's why we have a thought because we now have information that we didn't have before. So we have to ensure that we have the information before we set our mind to something, to accomplish something. And that information has to come from God. We surely don't have it. Because we make a lot of wrong decisions and go after a lot of wrong things. So we have to go after God's wisdom and God's knowledge and God's understanding before we look to set our mind and set our actions to something. Depend on my wisdom. Remember, this is the Holy Spirit speaking. Remember, depend on my wisdom um, and you will walk in peaceful paths. Set your heart to follow my heart. So we set our heart to follow the heart of the Holy Spirit. I know the mind of the Father. He loves you and has a good plan for you. So be determined, but determined to do the Father's will rather than your own. So we, we have to determine in ourselves to do the Father's will and not our own will. Right? We have to say, nevertheless, let, let thy will be done. Nevertheless, we have to say, nevertheless, this is what I want. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. We, we have to be easy to say that nevertheless. Sometimes that's hard because we want certain things and we have our own will and we have our own things fixed, but we can't be so sturdy and so rigid that we can't say nevertheless. And we listen to the Holy Spirit because he knows the mind of God. He knows the will of God. And when he speaks to us, we have to be able to say, okay, well, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. And understand the importance and the significance of the will of the Father being done and not our own will. Because his will, when we look to apply it, will surely get accomplished and surely it will be beneficial. Not just to us individually, but to the church and to the kingdom and to other people. All right. And it says you will always be pleased with the outcome. So we're always pleased with the outcome when we listen to the Father's will. So there's several scriptures here and it the uh, they are 1 Corinthians 8 and 2, Ephesians 5, 15 and 17, and James chapter 4, verse 15. So 1 Corinthians 8 and 2, it reads, And if any man think that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing, yet as he ought to know. 
So we confuse ourselves and we um, <laughs> fool ourselves into thinking that we know more than we know. And we're more aware than we really are. That we're more uh, intelligent than we actually are. And we make decisions and we make uh, set our mind to things to accomplish things. And we really don't have all the information. We've made these mistakes, unfortunately, many times in our lives. But we have to be wise and understand that before we make these decisions and for, before we take these actions, that we look to God to get that information. We look to God to get that knowledge because we understand that we don't know it all. We just don't. We think we do. We may even say we do. I've said it before as well. I'm sure just like you have. I know what I'm doing, but the reality is you don't because there's aspects of the thing that you're looking to do that you're just not aware of. But God has all that information. And if we look to then get that information from God and do his will and not our own will, then it'll be great for everybody involved. It'll be a great, great, great time. And we'll live in peace, we'll live in peace. And, and things will grow and develop in our lives. The second scripture is Ephesians 5, verses 15 to 17. And it reads, See then that ye walk circumspectfully, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. So we have to be smart. We have to be wise. We have to know some things. We can't just run amok like we know everything. And we didn't take the time to get, get insight from the Holy Spirit. We didn't take time to get the will of God. We didn't take the time to get the knowledge from God. We didn't take the time to get the understanding from God. We just ran out and did what we wanted to do or what we thought we were supposed to do. And then when it doesn't, when it all falls apart at the end, then we look to God and say, what happened? And he says, well, you didn't talk to me. You figured it out for yourself. I had different things for you to do. I had different things um, for you to understand. I had additional information for you to know, but you didn't take the time to get that information and to get my will, to understand it. You just moved on your own knowledge, which the Holy Spirit has already said is flawed. Your own wisdom, which the Holy Spirit has said is flawed because we don't know it all. We just really don't. So we have to get that insight from the Holy Spirit. We have to get the will of God. We have to get the knowledge, get the understanding, get the uh, revelation and the illumination of his word. And then, and then move forward because then our will is in alignment with his will because we have the knowledge and we have the intellect and we have what we need for that particular thing. And our last scripture is James 4, verse 15. And it reads, For that ye ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. So if the Lord will. So we have to go after his will. We have to search after his will. We have to understand his will. And we can't rely on our own selves. We just can't. Right. If, if we could rely on our own selves and we were that intelligent and that smart and we knew what was going on then we wouldn't have made the mistakes that we made in our lives. And some of those mistakes are devastating and they can affect us for years and years and years. They can affect our family. They can affect our children, affect our spouse, affect our parents, affect our friends. For years and years, relationships have been destroyed because people have decided that their will was a particular thing and they went to accomplish the thing and it destroyed some relationships that they, were, they should have kept for decades. And eventually, hopefully that relationship comes back. But now you're 10 years later, you're 15 years later, and now the thing still has to get done because the will of the Father hasn't changed. But now you're 15 years late where it should have been accomplished and you should have been at a particular place because you decided to implement your will and not the will of God. Now look where you're at. So we have to get that information. We have to get the understanding of what God wants, what his will is for our lives, what his will is for our family, what his will is for our situation. And whatever we do, we have to understand that he knows everything. He knows why we act this way, why we think this way, everything. We don't even know. I know we think we know ourselves, but we don't, not to that degree. We, he can, he's the only one that can look back generations and see when this particular door was open. And now this is why you act the way that you do, or this is why you feel the way that you do. Because of six generations ago, the door was open 
because of, for whatever reason. They open up themselves to the occult and allow the enemy to come in and take residence within them. And that was passed on from generation to generation to generation. So the enemy has some rights associated with you because of what your ancestor did. Well, God is aware of that. So he wants you to do some things to help get rid of that, get deliverance in your life. But you've decided, no, I, this is my will. I know what I'm doing. I understand everything. And that's not the case. So the prayer for today reads, I don't want to be wise in my own eyes, so I set my heart to follow you even when it looks as if I'm going the wrong way. Would you give me an ear to hear your wisdom and know your will so I can walk in them all my days? So we need to ask the God to give us the wisdom, give us the knowledge, give us the, the understanding, give us the ear to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. Recognize his voice and not just our own voice. Recognize that he's here for us and that he's with us. And he has a specific job and he, he never gets laid off. He's never late. Um, he's always ready to work. So we have to go to him to get the will of the Father. And we have to seek after wisdom, knowledge, and understanding from God so that we can accomplish the thing and we can set our mind to what God would have us to set our mind to and not the things that we look at not the things that we look at. So I want to thank you for joining us today. I'm going to pray for you. Um, and then uh, we'll, we'll join you tomorrow. I'm not sure who the guest is tomorrow, who's going to be speaking tomorrow. I'm not sure if it's Pastor Gene or not, but continue to watch these videos, continue to like, share, and subscribe, continue to tell your friends and tell your family, and um, go back and look at maybe some of the videos that you've missed. Um, so maybe they can they can bless your life. So, Father, we bless you and we honor you. We adore you today. We give you praise and glory and honor, oh, Father. We ask, oh, Father, that you would help us with our spiritual ears, oh, Father, to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, oh, God, to recognize his voice, oh, God, to recognize the voice that's within us, oh, Father. We're baptized with the Holy Spirit, oh, Father. He lives within us, oh, Father, so he doesn't have to scream. He can speak in a still, soft voice, and we should be able to hear, oh, God. Allow us, oh, Father, to push the other things aside, oh, Father, to listen for that voice, oh, God, to listen, to understand what your will is, oh, Father. And then we can ask for your wisdom and your knowledge and your understanding, oh, God, associated with that will, oh, God, so that we can put our mind to it and that thing can be accomplished, oh, God, and can be beneficial to us. It can be beneficial to our ministry, beneficial to the church, beneficial to the kingdom. Oh, God, as we continue to develop and mature and prosper and move forward, oh, King. So we bless you today. We honor you today. We glorify you today. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. So thanks for joining us today. As I said, don't forget, like, share, subscribe. Tell everybody, tell everybody, tell everybody. And we'll see you again. Be blessed. Oh, oh, oh.